Guess what, boys and girls? Yep, it's finally in. And incorrectly. Oh, what a story. And I got some hints to share for you, too. Whew. The two locator pins I fabbed up did work. And I will be giving you a little lesson on that later in this video. Ah. Uh, and I'm up where those two top bolt holes go. I don't know if you can see that very well. Give me my flashlight. Ah. Uh, goodness me. What a lot of headache and heartbreak. There we go. There's one. And there's one on the other side. Let's see from the other side here. And you know, maybe you can see that. But I put those two studs in there and basically hung the transmission from it. And that wasn't working. And after 25 hours of struggling to get this thing to seat, and I go, you know, yeah, I said that right. 25 hours of wrestling this thing. Now, go ahead and laugh. I'll wait. Still waiting. Go ahead, keep laughing. All right. So, <clears throat> what I did was, I took that right side one out, and I put it <clears throat> down here, where this 17 millimeter bolt goes. So I had it more on a diagonal. Again, I'll 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 delineate all this. I got a drawing to show you. It'll just make it a lot clearer. Uh, and once I get, once I did that, it took about 20 minutes. It was tight, baby. It was a tight, tight fit. Uh, once you get it within like a half inch, a half inch gap, you're pretty much there because now you're just going to get the nose cone of the input shaft into that pilot bearing. And what I did was grab this back with one hand, with another hand here to push, and just went straight up and down, making sure this was lined up dead center, not one side or the other. And just wiggle straight up and down. Once it gets close, you'll feel it because it's not gonna clunk around as much. It's, it's just, do, 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 do. I mean, literally, you know, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch at the most on either side. It feels like it's firm and like it wants to go in. You just gotta keep at it. But just wiggle up and down, wiggle up and down, and get crept it in, crept it in, crept it in. I got within less than a sixteenth of an inch. I went ahead and threw some bolts in it and tightened them down. Got everything put back together. You got the cross member back up and hadn't done uh, the drive shafts yet. But I did have the cross member back in with all 12 bolts and plus the four trans mount bolts. And then went to go put little plate on that holds this flex line for the clutch fluid and trying to figure out where that went because I couldn't remember goes like that there's a plate that goes right here on the starter I thought maybe this 70 millimeter held it but it's not it's not it's the bottom starter bolt and as I was looking at that I realized that there was a gap over here the top was closed up there was a gap over here and there was a gap over here between the bell housing and the block. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. The joys of car repair. And doing it the worst way possible. Vehicle and jack stands. Just got a floor jack. No transmission jack. No lift to get it up in the air so you can actually get some leverage. Nah, I can't do that. It's too easy. Too easy. Hence the 25 hours of struggling. But, so, I had to take the cross member back off, take the bolts out of the mount, put the jack back up, let it back down so I could access those top bolts, get everything loosened up, loosen up all the bolts I put in it, and then wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it some more until I finally got it flush all the way around. And I got to tell you, that's a bear. Getting up and down, up and down, up and down, check on top, check on the bottom, check over to the left, check over to the right. Because this jack's right in the middle, I can't just slide around under here and go look on that side and go look on this side. Not going to work. <laughs> but it's done. It's in. I got the four 17 millimeters in. There's one on that side that holds that plate, that holds the pipe clamp. There's one right here behind this, behind the clutch fork. 
there and there's a two up top those are the four big main ones everything else is 14 millimeter uh, there's a 12 on top of that plate but that doesn't matter it's 14 and that just holds a stiffener plate there's another yeah one two three four four fourteens that hold the stiffener plate and that's for the uh, starter bolt from the other side but basically those those 417s are the only thing that hold the bell housing to the block but they're done and I've even got them torqued down to 53 foot foot pounds the way it's supposed to be so ooh, it's solid now so now I just got to jack this sucker back up and get this cross member back in and move on from there so I'll be back and I'll explain what happened with those locating pins. They did work. They'll look, work a lot better if you do it the right way. So I'm going to show you how to do that and give you the tip on that. And as usual, we got another storm coming. So, maha. And as predicted, it's starting to rain. Now we just gotta get this downpipe back on. Put a brand new gasket on that. And then we gotta get the pipe clamp. Ah, oh, goodness me. 14 millimeter. And there we go. 46 foot pounds. All three. Oof. There you go. I'm gonna make you dizzy. July 4th, by the way, folks. Happy July 4th. Shaking is my hand. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, nice. <laughs> Okie doke. So here's the explanation I promised you. This is uh, not exactly the same, but it's very, very, very similar. You can see it's uh, the 22R. It's a little bit later, later W series Toyota transmission bell housing, but this is very similar. This is clutch side. Here's those two 17 millimeters up top. There's that locating pin hole. Starter bolts. Two more 17s. Here's that other locating dowel pin. There's a 14, 14, a 14, and a 14 on the bottom. One difference on mine, these are a little more inset. These bottom 14 millimeters bolt up to the stiffener plate. The only contact where this comes into the block is actually from these two 17s and all the way up around here. All right. So 
And there's my diagram. Go ahead and laugh at that if you want to. This is looking at it from the back of the truck. 217s up top. 217s here. There's the 14s. But anyway, what I did was I took those two pins. Look at my previous videos, about two videos back, one video back. And you'll see where I made the alignment pins out of a couple bolts. What I originally did was put them in here and guided the transmission forward and hung it on these two. I figured it would at least line up this dowel pin, which it did. And this one looked like it was aligned, although it's hard to see under there. And I worked for eight hours trying to get this put in. And it wasn't going to go. I kept ending up with a gap between um, the bell housing face and the back of the block of an inch and an eighth. And it couldn't go any further. Just wouldn't go any further. So what I did was I took this alignment pin out and left this one in. And I moved this pin down to here. And then tried it. 20 minutes later, I had the transmission snugged up flush to the block. It went right in. There was a, a, some wiggling involved. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. And by the way, once you start pushing this in, once you get within like maybe oh, half an inch and you're wiggling it, you feel a change. It doesn't wiggle so much. I know this is all really technical and yeah, it doesn't wiggle so much. Really technical sprays. But it didn't wiggle as much. Before it was going like a quarter to a half side to side. And once I got it there, it was like less than an eighth. If you're going up and down, it was going like this. And once I got it a half inch away, it was like that. So changing this one from here to here made a difference. Now, why is that? What I didn't consider, I figured I'd just hang it off of these two. It didn't eliminate this axis it eliminated a lot of this axis which helped some and i got it close and i got it close and it would get an inch away and it would stop it would get an inch away and it would stop get an inch away and it would stop Ugh. by taking this out of here and putting it over here this is on a diagonal now so it actually changes that axis so instead of being hung here and being able to pivot this way and pivot a little bit that way, it actually changes those axes this way. Which keeps it more lined up and easier to get in there. And that's what happened. That's why it only took 20 minutes once I moved, once I moved that locator pin. Now, some tips. Biggest problem I had was getting the nose cone of that input shaft into the pilot bearing. Yeah, I know I should have been more prepared. Let's see if we can find a decent image for you. Doopy doopy doop. There we go. That's close enough. See how it's got that small piece here? Just like that. And it's got a taper on it. There's also a little taper right here. They're all basically the same. It doesn't matter, you know, who made it. But the Toyota, it's, it's got an it's got angle here and it's got a little tiny angle up there to help it go into the pilot bearing. It wasn't helping me much. But what I found... was it's old now why does that matter because there's a lot of gunk and schmutz and schmoo that builds up over time what i did was i got some 150 sandpaper and lightly sanded that nose cone down 
and I test fit it with the old pilot bearing I pulled out. And at first, it didn't want to fit. It would go on like maybe a sixteenth of an inch and kind of jam on there. And I'm like, hmm, maybe that's what's holding me up. So I kept at it. I sanded it a few more times. And then I hit it really good with a scotch Bright pad to get it nice and shined up. And after doing that about four or five times, it was still a snug fit, but that pilot bearing slipped right on without resistance. I could push it on and, push and pull it off without a lot of resistance. So again, scotch braid some more, shine it up really good, test it some more. Nice, smooth fit. It was getting better. And then I just put a little grease on it. And then line it back up, and lo and behold, boom, 20 minutes later it went in. But it was still a tight fit. Because from that half inch to flush, it took about 10 minutes of wiggling straight up and down. Grabbing a tail shaft and putting my hand behind the transmission mount to push. Because there's no real good handles in this transmission to push. And you just kind of, you know, wiggle it up and down, up and down, up and down. And that took about 10 minutes until it finally came flush. Don't be tempted to get it less than a half an inch and put the bolts in and use the bolts to draw it on. You might damage something. These are aluminum bell housings. They're notorious for not being able to take that much stress doing that to them. They're not designed to do that. So you do not want to crack this bell housing. That's going to cost you money for sure. They're right. Just keep wiggling it. Keep pushing. Keep at it. But do yourself a favor. Put a little grease on the inside of the pallet bearing race. Clean up the end of that input shaft and shine it up with some scotch Bright. Make it nice and smooth. Get all the schmutz off of there. Get all the dirt and gunk and anything else that might be on there. Use some brake cleaner first. That'll help. So I did all that. Got it in. Boom. No problem. As you saw. Sorry I didn't get any video of it, but hey... <laughs> 25 hours of wrestling with this thing was enough. No more. So there we go. Transmission's in. Uh, I got a lot of the ancillaries hooked up. I got the drive shafts in. I got the transmission mount in. I got the cross member in. I got the exhaust hooked back up. Pretty much all I got left to do is put the bracket on, which mounts at the lower starter bolt. To hold the flex line for the clutch fluid get the slave cylinder on and then get the little hard line the u-shaped hard line from that flex line to the slave cylinder uh fill the transmission back up get the shifter bushings brand new shifter bushings into the shifter fill the transmission get the shifter back on get the shifter boot back on and then start gravity bleeding the system and maybe vacuum bleeding it. Make sure there's no air in it and go from there. If I get the gumption, I will show you all that. Sorry I haven't shown you too much of what's been going on with this trans installation. It's just been a freaking nightmare, folks. Absolutely a nightmare. But there you go. Just so you know. If you make those alignment pins, go on a diagonal a angle. I wouldn't do these two or in those two. I would do it like this. On an angle like that. Or like I did with it. Like that. Actually, it is, I did do it like that because this is the other side. That's why we made this. That's looking in from the back side. That one and that one. That's where I had it. And like I said, it worked pretty good. They were right. The alignment pin thing worked pretty good. That's all I can tell you. Uh, so that's all, that's what I get, that's pretty much all I got for you on this right now. Uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. Appreciate y'all watching. Sorry for rambling, but hey, 
if it helps somebody else to not mess around with this thing like I did and get frustrated and depressed and go, oh my God, it's never going back together and I'm not going to be able to drive my truck. Yeah, well, you got to keep at it. But I wish somebody would have told me some of these little hints and things that you got to do. I know it seems obvious to some of you watching, but hey, when you're learning, you're learning. And let me tell you, I went all over the web and YouTube looking for stuff and looking for tips and information. I have spent two weeks researching this because that's what I do. Because I don't like being stuck with 25 hours wrestling a transmission. So that's why I'm publishing this. That's why I'm putting it up. There's your tips. Any questions, let me know. I'll answer them if I can. Once again, thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. More to come. See you later.